Hello everyone, my name is Nadine Rasul and I'm a senior solution consultant for LastPass. Today we're going to talk about Enterprise API for LastPass and how to use them with Postman. The LastPass Enterprise API can be leveraged by our customers to help build workflows that helps them automate admin tasks like provisioning, updating and deleting users without the need to go into our admin consoles. By the way, have you considered subscribing to LastPass Solution Consultant channel? We offer weekly videos that help you build your MSP business. So, Postman, it's an easy to use software which helps you test out APIs and see what the response is. These re res response will either show you the data you requested or any error messages. This will help developers or DevOps to integrate LastPass API in their custom development, knowing full well that the APIs they're using will give them the information they're required. So what I'll show you would work in the Postman main application or the actual web Postman. You can use them in either one of those, either one of those two. So how to set it up. So to find Postman, what you need to do is go to www.postman.com and you'll come up to this site here. What you'll need to do is either download the desktop application and they've got various ones like you've got Windows, Macs and you've got uh, Linux as well. For my example that I'm showing you today, we'll be using the Mac version. So you can proceed to download and install it. So once you've installed it, you should see something like this, a blank area for my workspace for Postman. The next steps we're going to be taking is going into the admin console in LastPass and finding what our CID number is, which is the client ID, and what is our provisioning hash, which is like the client secret that is needed for LastPass uh, enterprise APIs to work. So let's go into here. But before we go, I need to say that this is only available within business clients. That's the only way you can have access to the admin console itself. So let's start. So here am I, I am in my LastPass vault, uh, as in I'm using the browser extension stuff. And what I need to, need to do is go into the admin console itself. If you wait for me. And here we've presented with the dashboard, the LastPass dashboard itself. And previously I referred to the LastPass CID. That's what we need for uh, the actual APIs to work. So the actual uh, CID number is actually your LastPass account number. So as you can see from the screen, I've got my LastPass account number. Uh, is, it, is this number here? So the next step for me to do is to actually create my provisioning hash itself, which is needed for the actual APIs to work. To do this, we just simply go to Advanced Enterprise API. So we have a provision hash itself. Uh, and what we need to do is at the moment on the screen, you can see that for me, it says reset your provision hash. LastPass Enterprise API allows you to reset uh, your provision hash. So you may have a policy that will be every six to uh, three to six months, you would need to uh, reset rotate your provision hash or rotating your secret keys as what some companies do. To do this, all you need to do is either click to reset your provision hash or click to uh, start provision hash. You get a message to say, are you sure you want, want to do this because I'm resetting my provision hash? And you can see this message says this will break all existing APIs. Uh, so all this is telling you is if you actually written uh, you know, an, an application that has the previous uh, provision hash, you'll need to update it uh, to with the new information because the other one will not work anymore. So please keep that in mind. Now you'll see on the screen, uh, I've been generated a new provision hash itself. Please note, this is the only time you're gonna be actually viewing this provision hash. If you were to refresh the page, log out, log in again, or close the window and go back to it, this will be gone really. So what I tend to do is 
it would be better for you to copy this copy this out across to your clipboard and uh, paste it within the last pass uh, shared folder if many developers are going to be using it or keep it secure in your last pass vault itself uh, as, a, as a secure note so now I have my CID and I know what my provision hash number is we can proceed to actually import the enterprise APIs for LastPass. You can get these files from either downloading from our site or asking our team itself. If you were to raise a ticket or reach out to your team within LastPass, they will be able to send it to you. Once you've got it, if you unzip it, place it onto your desktop, then all you need to do on the screen would be to click on import, go to file, go to upload folder and for me personally for myself I'll put it onto my desktop here uh, it's normally a JSON file itself open you've got here LastPass Enterprise API Postman Collection 2.1 just click on to import it's quite a, quite a simple import and as you can see we actually have all the APIs within for Enterprise APIs so beauty of this uh, within uh, Postman itself is we can also look at the documentation itself so if you want to know what any specific uh, API is there, uh, what does it do all you need to do is click on on the top for LastPass Enterprise API click on those uh, three circles then go down to view documentation as you can see here there's a documentation which gives you examples and what the actual and what it actually does here so for example, get shared folder, just gets the shared uh, folder data, uh, which is uh, available to that, this specific user itself. Now, as you can see within the body of these, uh, of these calls, you've got CID and, and prof hash, or, which is what we call the provision hash. Now, what these are is these are variables, really, which you need to set up in Postman. And that's what we're gonna do now uh, to show you to do how to set up the CID and the provision and hash. To do that, all you need to do is click on here under the little eye symbol, and then we've got something called globals. All you need to do is click on add. Here, we've got the variable screen set up. So what we do is uh, click, set the variable. These, all, these are very specific. Uh, variable names and they're all case sensitive as well. So what, what I'll do is set up the variable for CID and for provision hash. Remember, your CID is your actual account number and the provision hash is the one that you just uh, created from the admin console itself under the Enterprise API. So as you can see from the screen itself, I've got CID and I've got provision hash. Set them as default, the initial value is the actual account number and what the provision hash is. Remember, it all has to be uh, what is shown like this really, CID and provision hash. That's what the actual variables will be. Once you've done that, you just simply click on save and just close that. So what we're gonna do now is we're gonna do tests for one of the calls to make sure it's working. To do that, we're going to be using the get shared folder itself. So you can see the post where it's actually pointing to our API, which is lastpass.com forward slash enterprise API PHP. If you look in the body itself, you've got CID, which is a CID variable, provision hash, which is the actual provision and hash variable itself. The command itself, so to get shared data, and what data do we want? We want to get them all really. So if we click on send here, What we should be presented with is uh, the actual uh, response. Normally, sometimes what will happen is it will just show up as text. What you can do within the actual uh, Postman would be to change this as JSON and you get the presentable information there as well. So you can see the actual uh, call is working with our, uh, our client ID and our provision and hash as well. 
if you ever find out you've got an issue, you've got like an authorization error or anything like that, one thing to make sure is within your global variables, make sure you've set both the CID, provision hash, you've got the initial variable, the value, and you also got the current value as well. So make sure that both are, are, are set rather than only having one column being set. Uh, that would, uh, that would, that would uh, make the, the actual calls successfully work. So what are the benefits of using APIs compared to the you know, admin consoles? Well, if you're onboarding plenty of users, you might want to use the APIs to provision the users themselves, really. Rather than going to the admin console itself and adding it one by one, what we can do is we can go onto the APIs and do a, a mass uh, creating of all different users. To do that, I'll show you. If we go to provision user API, you can see as an example, for me, I, I've i actually got a command for batch add and all of this in here, different users we can add in here. So uh, the example I'm showing you at the moment is you can, add, you can have add the username, the username and the full name, username, full name, and a group here will uh, be set to and any attributes as well within here. These are all of what can be added as an example and also like um, stuff like password reset required. So then, so what we can do is we can set our password up like a default password, um, but then when the customer or when the user actually tries to uh, log in for the first time, the actual uh, user will be prompted to say, you need to change your password. So that's good common uh, password hygiene. So what I want to do in, in this example is I would like to just create two users. So we've got the user 0, zero last pass and user 1. Uh, that's it really. So what we need to do is simple one here is just to create this, create this uh, call and then click on send. Should get a message if it's successful with a status of OK. So that what that tells me is that actually the users have been created. So what we should be able to do now is to go into our admin consoles and see if user user zero and user one is in the system. And also has the full name been implemented for user one as well as John Doe. So let's have a look. So I'm in my dashboard at the moment. So all, all I need to do is click on the users itself. And as you can see, uh, the users have been created um, on our system itself. So that will be the way to actually work with uh, APIs and to uh, mass on board different users uh, by provisioning with the APIs. Now, the next example would be if you want to update or get some information uh, from a user itself. So in my example, we could find out more information about me. What happens when, when did I last log in? What am I using? Am I using multi-factor authentication and um, other details you can get from using uh, our APIs. So if we go back into our Postman. So in Postman, we, to actually get the information required for uh, a specific user, what you need to do is click on Get User Data. Go inside the body. And inside the body, we actually have uh, inside the actual data itself, this is where you want to pass the what is registered uh, email address for LastPass. So I'll just put my, one, my details in there now. Other than that, if I click on send, again, you'll, look, you'll get this information uh, just like a, a text. If I change that to JSON, uh, you'll see that I've got the full response here. Uh, you can see I've got the last login, tells me uh, 
when when it, when it was uh, when I last logged in when it was my last password change uh, when when it was created and what am I using for multi-factor authentication so in this, this example I'm using LastPass uh, authentication itself one thing I wanted want to, I want to I do want to uh, say is as you can see from all of my different calls that I've done here you've always seen that it's always going to uh, kind of like a, a plain text rather than the JSON and you may want to find may be quite annoying to you so the way to fix this within Postman I found is if you were to click on the actual cog itself go to settings and underneath here where we have language detection make sure you've set it uh, as JSON rather than auto if you close that and if I was to do uh, a new call so if I don't save this and go back and do repeat what I just did before so go to body my email address in and click on send you can see now it's automatically defaulting to JSON which may be a lot more easier for you as you can see um, all the information is in there also it'll, it'll work for all other new calls as well so if I, go, if I was to go into this one which we haven't seen at all which is the get shared folder details click and send you can see it's now uh, defaulted to JSON so you never need to do that that's all you need to do within your settings itself within Postman uh, to make it a bit more presentable for you so as you can see from our enterprise APIs for LastPass you've got various different APIs from provisioning users uh, deleting updating uh, you can disable multi-factor uh, also it gives you some reporting as well for you to look at so it's quite a powerful um, set of APIs you even got the ability to destroy user sessions so this is be quite useful for your DevOps team or your development team to use alongside your other applications itself running it in postman is quite simple as well all it is is importing making sure you're setting up the the actual global variables making sure you set up the CID and the actual provision hash uh, once those are set up you should be able to use those out the straight out of the box to actually uh, work with uh, LastPass Enterprise API to actually look at the documentation itself it do with Postman you do need to set it up as a workspace so within uh, Postman it may ask you to be registered to actually use workspace so you just need to register with like your email account or anything like that so I hope you see that using our APIs in Postman is quite easy and using it using these APIs may save you time when doing admin tasks if you actually found this video helpful please click on the like button also consider subscribing to the LastPass solution consulting channel so you're made aware of any new videos thank you very much take care